In the fast-paced realm of mobile gaming, leaderboards and competitive play have become an integral aspect of player engagement. As the thrill of climbing ranks and earning exclusive rewards drives players, how can developers tap into this excitement by creating a dynamic and rewarding leaderboard system? With the rise of games like Royal Match, players are no longer content with casual play. They're seeking intense competition and the chance to prove their skills. But creating an event leaderboard system that's both fair and enticing is both challenging and time-consuming. Introducing Nakama and Hero, your ultimate tools to level up your game's competitive edge. With Nakama's open source game backend and Hero's game development kit, building an event leaderboard like Royal Match's King's Cup is a breeze. Today, we venture deeper, exploring how to design an event leaderboard that not only tracks player progress, but buckets players into individual groups, as well as resets and rewards at regular intervals, keeping the competition fresh and players constantly engaged and satisfied. From crafting dynamic score tracking and defining event durations, to crafting a reward system based on rankings, we'll guide you every step of the way. By the end of this session, you'll have the knowledge to set up an event leaderboard that keeps your players coming back cycle after cycle. With that said, let's get started and master the art of competitive leaderboards. Okay, so just like we did in the last video, we'll start by looking at our server code. This is our main.go file, and if you've watched our previous Reconstructing Fun video, you'll know that we define a bunch of error objects here that we use throughout our code. We then have our standard init module function, which is, if you're familiar with writing Nakama server runtime code, then this is your standard initialization for where you start writing your own custom server code. We get our environment variables here and we use that to provide the hero license key and then we specify our hero bin path. Now this is where we initialize hero itself and what we've changed here since the last video is we've added in the event leaderboard system. You can see here we call hero dot with event leaderboard system and then we pass in a string for where the configuration file for that event leaderboard system lives. We also pass in true for the register property, which ensures that all of the RPCs associated with the event leaderboard system are registered within Nakama. Let's now go and have a look at the event leaderboards configuration file. You can see at the top here, we have our top level property event leaderboards. And within this, we define our individual event leaderboards. You can see I have a King's Cup event leaderboard defined here. It has a name, a description, we specify a category which can allow us to filter it when we're searching for event leaderboards in our code. We specify whether or not the scores should be ascending or descending order. We provide an operator, just like we do for standard leaderboards within Nakama. Here we're using the increment operator, which means that every time a user submits a score to the leaderboard, it will increment their score based on what they previously had. Now, there are other operators we can use here, such as best, which will only take a score if it beats one of their previous scores, and set, which will always set it to whatever the latest value is. Next, we have a reset schedule. This is a cron format. And here, just for demonstration purposes, I'm specifying that we want the event leaderboard to reset every five minutes. Now, typically you would probably want to do something like every Monday at nine o'clock or perhaps every month. Next, we define our cohort size. We specified this to be 50. And what this means is that each individual player will be competing on a leaderboard of 50 players, regardless of how many total players are actually competing in the King's Cup event. This ensures that leaderboards don't become stale and allows players to progress fairly. Next, we define our maximum number of scores. We've set this to zero, which means that the player can submit as many scores as they want, but you can use this to limit how many scores they can submit to the event leaderboard during each cycle. After this, we specify how many tiers we want our event leaderboard to have. In the King's Cup, we only want one tier, but our event leaderboard system is advanced enough to support multi-tier events. Next, we have our max idle teardrop, and because we only have one tier in our King's Cup, we've set this to zero. But what this allows us to do is if a player is in, say, tier three, and then they stop playing for a week, which could be the reset schedule, for example, then they may drop a tier, depending on what we've configured this to be. The next is our reward tiers property. This allows us to define per tier and for a specific rank range what rewards each player will get at the end of each cycle. 
you can see here that this is an array and for our tier zero, because we only have one tier and it is zero indexed. So for tier zero, we have the first object here defines that for rank one and rank one only, we've specified rank min to be one and rank max to be one, which means the top performing player in each particular cohort will receive the following reward. They'll receive an energy modifier, which is for the lives energy. The operator will be infinite, which means they'll receive infinite lives for a duration of 10,800 seconds. And that just happens to be three hours. You can also see here that we have this tier change property. And because again, we're only defining one tier in this event leaderboard, we've specified that this will be zero. However, you can reward players by directly increasing or decreasing, if you like, their tier within the event leaderboard for the next cycle. After the energy modifiers, you can see that we reward the player with a legendary card from the card's legendary item set. Then we reward them with a number of power-ups. You can see here we're giving them a hammer, an arrow, a cannon, and so on. Next, we have our silver tier reward. Again, we don't define any tier change here. And this is just for the second player in the event leaderboard for that cycle. They receive an infinite energy modifier for the lives, this time for 7,200 seconds, which is two hours. They receive four cards from the cards collection. And again, they receive a number of power-ups. We then have the third place reward. Again, an infinite lives modifier for a single hour. They receive some cards and some more items. And then what we've defined here is a bit of a broader reward range. And this goes from rank four to rank 10. These people receive some tokens, 10 tokens, and some items here as well. I've also added a participation reward here, which means that everybody from rank 11 to 50 will also receive 100 coins just for participating in the event. Next, we have the change zones property. Now, I haven't defined anything here because we only have a single tier in our King's Cup event leaderboard. However, if you look at the documentation for this, which I'll leave a link to below, you can see that the change zones property allows you to define promotion and demotion rates for particular players at particular ranks, which then allows you to define how players move up and down through your event leaderboard tiers. Next, we have the start time sec and end time sec properties, which allow you to define when the event leaderboard begins and when the definitive end time for the event leaderboard is. In this particular instance, I'm saying zero for both, which means it will start as soon as the event leaderboard is registered on the server and it won't have an end time, which means it will continue to repeat infinitely. Next, we have our duration, and this is how long each cycle of the event leaderboard lasts. You can see here that I've specified 300, which is five minutes which ties up with the five minute cron that we specified earlier. I could change the value here to something like 240. And what that would mean is that the actual event is active for four minutes and resets every five minutes, which means that after the four minutes is up, players will no longer be able to submit scores for that particular iteration. I'll change this back to 300 so players can submit scores for the entire duration. And finally, we have some additional properties. We have this in most of our hero systems, and this allows you as a designer to add additional information to this particular object, in this case, the event leaderboard, which you can use, for example, to define various different things that your client receives, which then may allow you to do things such as tie it to sprites or different resources within your client. Coming over to the inventory configuration now, you can see that we have our previously defined cards for the collectible card system, but I've also defined all of our power-ups now, and you can see that we have a max count for each of these, they're stackable, and they're also consumable. And I've just added one of these for each of the rewards that we defined for our event leaderboard. Let's take a look at the server console now. If I come over to our API Explorer here in the Nakama console, you can see that because we specified register true, we now have all of our event leaderboard RPCs. And these are claim, get, role, and update. The claim RPC allows a user to claim a reward for an event leaderboard that they have participated in. The get RPC allows the player to get information about the current event leaderboard cycle. 
The Roll endpoint allows players to rejoin for the next iteration, or if they haven't already joined the event leaderboard, it will put them in for the first time. And the Update RPC allows them to submit a score to the current iteration for this event leaderboard. Let's now jump over to the client side and take a look at the code there. Again, if you've watched the previous Reconstructing Fun episode, you will know that we use this Hero Coordinator class to have a deterministic startup within our Unity game. Inside of this, we have our create systems async function. Just like we did in our previous video, we set up our Nakama connection details, a logger, our network probes for ensuring that we monitor network connectivity. We create the systems object, and then we create our Nakama system. We define our authorizer function, which in this case is using device ID authentication. And then we define our systems that we'd like to use within Hero. Here we're adding the inventory system, the economy system, the event leaderboard system, and our custom King's Cup system. Once all of the systems have been initialized, we then grab the King's Cup Manager by looking for the King's Cup Manager game object, and then we call its init async function. Let's have a look at our King's Cup Manager class now. This class is responsible for updating all of the various UI components within our game, but the interesting functions to look at here are the init async function, where we get a reference to our Nakama system and King's Cup system, and then we create an observer for the King's Cup system. You can see here that we have an on King's Cup system changed function. That is where we observe any changes to the King's Cup system itself and then update our UI accordingly. Next, we call the get and roll async function within our King's Cup system, and that's gonna grab the event leaderboard, and if appropriate, we're gonna roll the user into the next iteration of the leaderboard as well. And then finally, we will go to the event screen. Let's have a look at the on King's Cup system changed function. Here we make sure that the current event leaderboard is not null. We then update our end time seconds, which we use in our user interface to show the user how long is remaining for this current event leaderboard. We work out whether or not we should show the claim button if the current event leaderboard active time has elapsed. Then we clear out any previous scores from the UI, and then we update the UI with the current scores for the current event leaderboard iteration. We also make sure to update our own score, which sits at the top of the leaderboard just for easy viewing. Next, we have the submit score function. And what this does, will refresh the King's Cup system and we'll check to see if the current event leaderboard iteration is active. If it is, we're simply going to submit a random score for demonstration purposes. And we'll do this by calling the submit score async function on our King's Cup system. We'll dive into the implementation of these methods in a little while. Then we have our claim function. Again, we'll refresh the King's Cup system here. We'll make sure that we're eligible to claim a reward first. And if we are, we'll call the claim async function we'll show the reward panel, and then we'll update the UI to make sure that we're displaying any of the rewards that the user received in the rewards panel itself. Finally, once we've claimed, we check with the King's Cup system to see if we're eligible to roll for the next iteration of this event leaderboard, and if so, we will rejoin that iteration. Taking a look at our King's Cup system now, you can see that this inherits from the observable system class, and it also implements the iInitialize system interface. Here we have an iEvent leaderboard, which is a cached version of the current event leaderboard for the user. We have some helper properties here that define whether or not the user can claim a reward, whether or not they are eligible to roll for the next iteration of the leaderboard, and whether or not the current event leaderboard is active or not. We also have a const string here, which we define for the leaderboard ID. In this case, it is King's Cup. And then we have our initialize async function here. Now, what this is doing is making sure that the event leaderboard system itself has already been initialized by the time this system gets initialized. And the reason we do that is for that deterministic startup that we talked about earlier on. We need to make sure that the event leaderboard system is initialized before we can call any of its functions later down the line. Let's have a look at the refresh async function here. Here we grab the event leaderboard from the event leaderboard system by calling get event leaderboard async. 
Once we have the event leaderboard, we will notify any observers to allow the user interface to be updated accordingly. Next, we have the get and roll async function. Now this goes away and grabs the event leaderboard again. It caches that event leaderboard data. And then what it will do is it will check whether or not the user is eligible to roll for the next iteration of the event leaderboard. And it will check to make sure that they don't currently have a reward that has gone unclaimed. If that is the case, so if the user is eligible and they don't have a reward, it will call the role event leaderboard async function and that will place the user into the next iteration of this event leaderboard. Once that's done, we will notify observers and again, the UI can be updated. Next, we have these three functions here, role async, submit score async, and claim async. All of these three methods are simple wrappers around the appropriate event leaderboard system functions, for example, role, update, and claim. Now, the reason we do this is because event leaderboard system itself is a stateless system. So because we want to observe the changes and we also want to have access to a cached representation of our event leaderboard, we're creating these wrapper functions here, which allow us to grab the event leaderboard data, cache it within the King's Cup system, and then again, notify observers in all of these cases so that we can update the user interface. Let's now take a look at how this works in practice. If we play the game here, you can see that we have our event leaderboard screen. You can see at the top that this is my current record. I'm second in this particular event leaderboard cohort. I have a score of 115 and I've attained the silver chest. You can see here that we have all 50 players within our current cohort listed with scores next to their names. And you'll see which players are eligible for the specific rewards that we defined in our configuration file. For example, everyone from rank 10 to 4 will receive a standard chest. Everyone from rank 3 will receive the bronze chest. The silver chest is rank 2 and the gold chest is rank 1. You can also see here that we have the claim button, which means that this current iteration of the event leaderboard has finished and we can now claim our reward. If I click this, you'll see that we have our reward screen here and we can see all of the items as well as our energy modifier, which is infinite lives for 120 minutes or two hours. And we can press the claim button here and this will take us just back into our game screen just for demonstration purposes. And within our demo project here, we have a submit score button. This will simulate the score that a user receives from playing, for example, a match three game like this. And if I submit the score now, you'll notice that I've been placed into a new iteration of the event leaderboard. We can see that there are four minutes remaining. We're in rank 47 and we have a score of nine, which means that we're not currently eligible for anything other than the participation reward. Let's wait until this timer runs out and then we'll see the difference in reward that we receive at the end of this iteration. Okay, so this iteration has finished and we're now eligible to claim our reward. And if we click on claim, you can see that we only received our participation reward of 100 coins. And that is how quick and easy it is to add an event leaderboard system similar to the King's Cup from Royal Match into your games using Hero and Nakama. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems, such as the one you've seen here, extremely quick and easy, with our configuration-driven and composable meta systems, such as inventory, economy, energies, progression, and more. We empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed, cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com hero where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.